Miles of Kabul is no more. Miles has been co to Kabul and has come back, and we did an interview with him and got everything, all the rest of it. If you want to go check that out, of course you can. And he's now Miles of Sudan. He is he's going into the old British territories once again to reclaim it for queen and country, presumably. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. And I thought we'd do a bit of an update on his trip. How's it going? And uh, it's uh, eventful, let's put it that way, because it's uh, it's a bit mad of a thing to do, of course, and therefore I guess we'll see what he did. So the first one here, we have this up, which is his Twitter feed where he's posting most of this. So he, this is before he's on the way to the plane. Went to mass in a state of grace on the train with my equipment on the way to the airport hotel. There were no seats, so I'm chilling on the floor listening to Oh Come All Ye Faithful, Life Is Good. But him being a very Christian man, for people who don't know Miles, his uh, reasoning for doing these wacky, weird trips is, of course, there's a bit of goofing around, but the fundamental point that he can go there with a bundle of cash and just hand it out to people who are homeless or poor or whatever else, you know, direct charity instead of giving it to some group who then, God knows where it goes, mm. what percentage of it is spent on advertising yeah. for the charity. Um, no, just direct. I'm, you know, he wants to go there and hand it out directly because he believes that's the Ground efficient. level altruism. Yeah, and it's um, after meeting the guy. So if we go to the next one, this is just the, the interview we did, which everyone should check out on lotusseaters.com. And uh, it was quite interesting to meet him personally and to interview him about this because a lot of the criticisms uh, that are laid out of him just don't stack up, in my opinion. And you can go and check those out in the interview. But also just the, the nature of the chap. He, he seems, you know, sincerely wants to just go out there and help people. It, it really comes across that, no, he's just genuine about it, which, mm. yeah, okay, whatever. You know, the, the, that personality matrix is being produced and it's in him but anyway that's getting back to the uh the trip so what happened when he got to the airport well he got detained under the terrorism act <laughs> 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 a lovely way to start your trip so oopsie daisy i got interrogated for terrorism under schedule seven of the 2000 terrorist act chaps were lovely took my prints and such sadly didn't get a copy they saw all my memes on my phone oh dear concluded that i'm not a threat and i'm free to travel missed my flight sad face why did they think he was because he travelled to Kabul recently, of course. Oh, of course. When the Taliban took over. And then, of course, him being like, yes, I want to go to South Sudan. I'm like, you're not a jihadist, are you? <laughs> like, what's so going on? That, that makes perfect sense. So, now. you know, fair enough to the, the chaps there who are, are doing their jobs. And he says himself that you can't blame them. You know, it's just what it is. Mm. Um, and he didn't get detained or anything because he's not. He's, he's just some goofball, pretty much. So anyway, let's move on. So let's go to the next one, which he says, I can wholeheartedly say I've had more stress and trouble from Luton London Airport than I have from the Taliban invasion <laughs> of Kabul. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He had the same thing. It was like it was he legitimately him himself was persecuted more by his university than the Taliban when they overtook Kabul as well mm. because they just let him leave because they just wanted the foreigners to be gone <laughs> so they could carry out what they want to. Anyway, so uh, how did he? So you may remember in Kabul he did a bit of an S post, like he left a log in the toilet for the Taliban to find. Briefly, yeah. Yeah, he's done it again apparently. So. <laughs> TMI, but once again talked myself into multiple free meals on the flight and dropped a log in a South Sudanese hotel airport. The toilet is now leaking water. Hmm, history repeats itself from Afghanistan. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, it's just, I find it funny. Uh, toilet humor. Let's go to the yeah. next one. So he's been goofing around. So you can see him going out of the airport here. Apparently filming in the capital is not allowed. So he had to do this a bit discreetly. So he's just filming from the taxi of uh, what it's like outside the airport and managed to upload it which is amazing because mm. i mean internet connection in south sudan good luck yeah <laughs> so, i mean a lot of this is of course text because he's not able to do too many videos and whatnot mm. yeah but as you can see there's the place goofing around anyway goofy place as he says let's move on so let's go to the next one so this is him going to a cafe so found a pseudo coffee shop for young south sudanese it's got wi-fi big tvs people have macbooks and there's some cool hipster furniture what a country do love me some South Sudan over Starbucks any day. Yeah, those Starbucks hasn't exactly set the standards mm. high, does it? Yeah, they've also got nice TVs. Look. Yeah. They've even got Cokes, so mm. everything's well. For people who don't know South Sudan or the history of it, it's uh, kind of an S show, of course, because mm. recent, well, I, I think it's since the country got its independence, the vice president and the president had a big falling out. And uh, the different ethnic groups, Dinkas and Newers, and then they ended up declaring war on each other. Uh, it's been going on ever since. Mm. And also there are like 12 other groups declaring war on each other in between because it's a modern war. Something so. of a fractured country. Yeah, it's it's like Fallout New Vegas IRL. Ah. Almost. So they, they have, my understanding is they have had peace talks for the second time since 2018. But in between then, loads of people have also just been killed because, you know, uh. law, kind of lawless place. So mm. yeah, there's the risks. So moving on from this, we'll get to the next one. 
which is uh, him getting his currency. So of course, yeah, <laughs> you have to exchange the currency for local currency, and as you can see, you uh, the currency is worthless. So mm. it's been inflated, I think, three hundred percent. Yes, and that would probably be literally worthless this time that or the day after he would have been given it because of the inflation rate down there. I, I don't know if it's it's like that anymore. You know, it's not like Venezuela mm. where every day it's doubling or whatever. Yeah, maybe I'm just exaggerating. But it's just funny. It's just like yeah, here I have a massive stack of notes for a few dollars. <laughs> Alrighty, so yeah, there's him doing that. Bit of a, a soy face there as well, actually. <laughs> I don't know if that's on purpose. But moving on, so if we go to the next one, we have him just uh, goofing around. Casual morning, walk in the dodgy part of Juba. Got told not to go into this area, so I thought I'd check it out. Fair. More peaceful this morning than New York, I reckon. Looks like it from here. Probably true as well. Mm. So anyway, let's carry on. So let's go for some more posts. So this one is just him mentioning that toothpaste <laughs> is brown in South Sudan, and when you spit it out, it turns green. Wizardry. I mean, actually interesting to me. I, I, I yeah. want to try the toothpaste, to be honest. Color-changing toothpaste. Anyway, the magic of South Sudan. Moving on. So let's get to the next one. Uh, first, first, sorry, from my first day in South Sudan, the weather's lovely, people are very friendly and helpful, I don't feel unsafe, I got offered a tribal wife, I goofed off with the locals and got some cheap food. Absolutely recommend South Sudan. Can't wait for tomorrow. I can honestly say I prefer it to London in many ways. I, I mean, there, there was a point made on, and it'll be later. Um, I just can't remember in which order I put it. In which someone's like, this is like reading a journal from the 1800s, mm. where someone's just like, went up and met the tribals. They offered me a wife. How lovely. <laughs> like a diary entry or something. So it's just, it's just neat. Anyway, moving on. Let's go to the next one. So this is him trying to take some images of the place. So, okay, on the first day, I was just taking to Ging. I noticed the dogs roam freely and are in bad shape, but are friendly. So I'm going to buy a bunch of meat for them to eat. I saw a homeless lady with a child, so I'll help her tomorrow alongside sending the tribe some supplies. So he also has various contacts in South Sudan who have asked him to come mm -hmm. and want to meet up with him. So he'll have someone showing him around and whatnot, yeah. presumably. But there's also um, the obvious point, as with Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, of course, they're Muslims. Dogs are not Islamic, so they're treated terribly. Mm -hmm. And being British, of course, we we find that particularly horrible to look yes, at. Yes, because we so, love dogs. Yeah, and so the the particular interest there, which many people might not, which is just to go out your way and try and help the doggos as well, because mm. what do the doggos do? Yeah, but uh, in a country like that, I can imagine there's not much time for doggos because they've got bigger no. problems. So fair enough to the local people as well. But anyway, moving on. So that's what he's up to, doing his bit of charity work, as he does. Let's go to the next one, please. So this is him goofing off as well. So... For people who don't know, apparently he went to Pompeii and found this coin. Oh, and very nice. It, he thinks it's probably a replica. He was meant to hand it in, but he forgot, and then he was on the flight home, and he's like, oh, bugger, okay, whatever, mm. I'll keep it. And then on the trip to South Sudan, he's going down to the, the Nile, and he's like, I'm just going to throw it somewhere near the Nile, and then future archaeologists can just be utterly confused, Lamal. So that's what he's up to as well. Apparently he's going to throw it on the Ugandan border. That's a novel idea. <laughs> it's just good fun. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You're going to do there and do these charity things. Have some fun while you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. Have a smile. So moving on. Let's go to the next one. So this is him saying, uh, guess who got invited to visit a remote tribe who only get contacted every few months? Apparently they'll offer me a wife and a new name. Very tempting, but I'll have to decline. Going to bring them some supplies. So again, talking about the tribe. He's been, he's been very well received, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, he's also just very polite. And mm. that's part of his charm, I must say. Mm. Just, you know, I'll have to decline. Very nice. I'm sure you're lovely, but... Uh... This, isn't, this isn't the behaviour of people who would um, deem him to be an oppressor. No. Oh, yeah, and we'll get into some of the weird uh, criticisms, which, again, just don't make any sense to me, mm. but whatever. So we'll move on. So we'll go to the next one, which... Uh, I can't remember what any of these are, by the way. There's just so many. <laughs> but, so him saying, it's 10.30pm here in South Sudan, and there are regular gunshots going off in the middle of the night. Might, might have to shout out of the window and tell them to shush, because I need my sleep. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's brave. We had the same thing in, in Kabul. Where just, there's just random gunshots going yeah. off. It's just part of life. I mean, in Kabul, there was a... The nice side of it is it wasn't so much people being killed, but mm. people get trying to get through traffic... But it's and they want everyone else to move. It's actually admirable Sorry, that, that, that he retains a sense of humour, even whilst he can actually literally hear gunfire. Yeah, I mean, this is actually a, a very good trait to have, which mm. is, even when you're under stress, just you know, laugh about it, because what else are you meant to do? Yeah, uh, It's a type of coping mechanism, if nothing else. Mm. So let's go to the next one. So I can't remember what this one is either. I don't feel unsafe, weirdly. People are just busy with their day and are glad to see you as a curiosity to them. A few people have chased me or threatened me with AKs, <laughs> but it happens. Yeah, just... It happens. Yeah. <laughs> S happens. From the case, it happens. The only issue is that people do try to overcharge you, but you'll find that anywhere. Yeah. As a 
foreigner who is presumed to be very rich. Yeah, but we get get overcharged every single day, but we don't have the legal right to question that charge, do we? Yeah, but I've had this in Eastern Europe as well. Mm. It's it's just part of being a foreigner who doesn't know what the local prices are. Anyway, so let's go to the next one as well. So areas of remote South Sudan. Now, despite the living conditions, people were really friendly, even if they didn't notice me. Uh, They were smiling in the streets and being polite to others, kind of the most people in the UK, not going to lie. Yeah, it sounds like it. And then just some pictures there of the the rural area and people making their little shacks out of whatever or whatever else. Because, of course, this is a a recently war-torn place and also, well, also just for hundreds of years has been kind of backwater. Mm. Put it that way. They'll be polite about it. Anyway, moving on. So we'll go to the next one, which is uh, him saying, someone asked me for pics of the mud huts in South Sudan. They don't like photos because they believe it steals their soul as an image. I think that's a meme. Like, it's meant to be the Marlies or something, believe that. Oh, okay. So I think he's referencing that, presumably. I climbed a hill behind it and sneaked a pic. Maybe they do believe it. I don't bloody know. I'm not there. He is. And uh, you can see the mud huts there, which, yeah, not bad. I mean, you know, better than that shack we just saw. So, yeah, 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 certainly. I, I mean, if you go up to Stonehenge, actually, a uh, bit of local knowledge, but there's a, a visitor's area, and they recreated some of the old-style buildings of, like, the Celts. And so the little mud huts there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's so cool. very the same. Anyway, so moving on, we'll go to the next one, which is uh, him saying he drank from a branch of the Nile, boiled to use purification tablets, and then a life straw. It's insanely hot, so I'm drinking about four litres a day. So Good Lord. He has got to taste the Nile, which... Yeah. Yeah. Can't... Um, yeah. Little it's, dream uh, there. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> Let's keep going. What else has he been up to? So I, I do love these memes that are coming out. So you can see the meme here, for example. So here's the West, the, the virgin West on the left there being like, I'm cancelling Christmas because of Imicron. And then there's uh, Miles is just like, just walking around Africa aimlessly. Chad. Just, just drank out of the Nile. Mm. <laughs> I mean, he is having more fun than us. Like, yeah. what am I doing for Christmas? Well, I, I know which one I'd prefer. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to him actually about, you know, could we go back for a, a trip together? Could it be funny? But uh, uh, I don't know. And we'll see why we don't know about that mm. in a minute. So if we go to the next one, we have uh, randos who are trying to shame Miles for doing this. So, Oh, of course. Very much the same criticisms from people who are upset about him being in Afghanistan. Um, this one particularly being that he's some kind of white saviour who has turned up. Oh, dear. Like Stacey Dooley, that evil, evil celebrity. Oh, yes, who um, David Lamby took an issue with, yeah, I recall. Yeah, so this person here is uh, very mad, and we'll go to some of his stuff in a minute, but you can see there he's tagging uh, UK and South Sudan and trying to be like, how dare this guy turn up and film the place? And it's like, he's allowed to. Yeah. He's got the visas, paid for them. It's his money. Yeah. It's his life. You can't and stop he's him. he's helping them as yes, well. Yes, <laughs> but none of that really matters. He's white, so he bad. Okay. <laughs> so you can see Lord Miles responding here. This man is making up lies. Sadly, I went here to document South Sudan. I've said very positive things because I like this country. I heard some gunshots and I've done two days of charity work to help the sick and poor. I do this as a Christian and I'm enjoying myself. As you yeah. should. There was also, there was only one thing in there which um, we can't confirm or deny because, you know, news from South Sudan. Funnily enough, not very quick. Mm. There was, uh, Miles said he uh, had to be blocked at one point because a bridge had been blown up by a bomb, he was told. And then this guy's like, there's no bomb that's gone off. What are you talking about? And he's like, well, how do you know? Like, Miles was there, asked the guys, presumably. They told mm. him that. Maybe it's false information. Maybe it's true. Or maybe it's just a latency, a latency issue. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, it's, I should mention it because it's in there. But if we go to the next one, we have him being mad, this individual. It is a trend lately that a lot of people from the West, white people to be specific, travel to third world countries and do what I like to call poverty <laughs> porn. <laughs> poverty porn. <laughs> That's not what poverty porn even means. So oh, it means something else. Yeah, no, poverty porn is actually an old phrase. It means essentially where a charity will go to an area and make those videos just like, Juba has to travel 10 miles every day to get water. What, you mean Amnesty International? Three pounds a month could do... And when you, like, put the camera over there, you see a huge city. Like, that's oh, what poverty Oh, I see. Right. So you go to an African country that, quite frankly, is is not a third world in the middle of a war hellhole, and you make up some story or you exaggerate the situation, so you're only looking at the worst of the worst, and then you're not showing the big city in, you know, Botswana that's doing fine. I see. For example. Mm. That's what poverty porn is. So it's not about white people turning up and being like, ooh, look, poverty. No, if the poverty's real, then the poverty's real. Yeah. It's distorting the image so of the country. So the fetishization of a cause, in effect. Yeah, yeah, which Miles hasn't done. As you've shown, he's showing us, well, look, you can get flights. You know, here's a cafe. It's quite nice. People mm. around on bikes, all the rest of it. You know, he's showing you both sides of it. So he also says here, they record only the poor and struggling sides of our countries and ignore the beautiful sides for their views and likes. Lie, just lie. And this is why I have little time for this individual who just is not showing the truth. 
and mm. is trying to get Miles kicked out for some reason. Anyway, moving on. So if we go to the next one, we have uh, Miles saying thank you to all the people, 40 plus, from South Sudan who have messaged me saying ignore that guy, lying about my intentions, with thousands of people from the West as well. I like this country and I don't care what one liar has to say. Yeah. Fair. Fair enough. Mm. Anyway, moving on. So, of course, there are so some Western haters who are weird. So this is some woman being upset. Bro, if you think South Sudan heat is real, let me just loop in KOT. They won't want your fake charity at their expense either. KOT? I don't know what KOT is, but fake charity. Like, he's literally giving them money. Yeah, it's not fake charity. I mean, there's a sort of simplest of charity work. You, c- I have money. Here's the money. You have the money now. Your life is better off. Yes. You see how that works? You see how that's mm. the charity? We have, we, we, we have needs. Okay, here you go. It's it's so simple. Uh, that's why I find the criticism so strange. It's like, it's not real charity. What, they, what if he buys rice and gives them rice? Is that better? I, I don't know. Well, what, what's her definition of true charity, I wonder? Well, we won't find what out. It's virtue signaling on Twitter. Because obviously. she responded to being called out by just blocking him. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and then hiding herself. So Standard. Yeah. Anyway, she ran away. So let's move on. So there is uh, some bad news, of course, which is that... Uh, Miles now has to leave South Sudan a bit early. So this is where the story gets a bit more interesting. So got stopped by the military 40 miles in and said I needed a travel permit due to a bombing of a bridge. Ministry of Travel has closed for seven days, so there's no permit. The captain said I needed just two soldiers to escort us, but that was $300. No way. I've chilled with some people in mud huts, though, so just hang around there. That's where a lot of these soldiers are pointing AKs at our car like there were 14 as well, he says. Hmm. And so is he going to waste $300 on soldiers when he could just give it away to people who need it? <sighs> nah. So going to not go down that road. So he's trying to do something else. So if we go to the next one, he says, uh, with the lockdown of some roads from the bombing, I'm going to have to improvise before they shut down other roads. The road to Uganda is shut for five days. I may have to walk to Kenya instead and then loop around to Uganda. Still the same route in reverse, thoughts. So this was the plan that he would go around through right. a few countries so he's having to change it. And he says, uh, okay, I'll start out for Kenya tonight. Limited tweets from now on. Final shower for like two to six days. Lol. Because he's on a little like um, satellite program to mm. upload these tweets. So not able to tweet much in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Unsurprisingly. And then something bad happened. The World Health Organization decided to let us in on something. So Miles lands, goose around for two days, and then the World Health Organization task force has been sent to investigate an unidentified mysterious illness which has killed 89 people in South Sudan. Oh dear God. Uh, <laughs> and you can see him going, Just oh no, luck. here we go again. <laughs> like, he arrives in a country, it immediately collapses, oh crap. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> yeah, so he said he'd uh, promised myself that I'd go on another adventure. Um, I'm looking after myself and not letting anyone... Uh, evacuate me instead I'll leave on my own accord so now he's like yeah okay if this country's going to go to hell I'm going to get the hell out now mm. rather than waiting for the World Health Organization to announce some new virus that's killing people left right and center yeah Unlike Omicron, thinking that by the way but mm. anyway so if we go to the next one he also had a bit of a run in with the locals or at least one local who was uh, very mean so he says he's had one e- person uh, anonymously email me stating they've got powerful friends and they've requested to have him arrested at the Kenyan border paired with a virus that may stick the nation into lockdown alongside with no banking infrastructure meaning I can't get money out and um, as much as people have given money for him to do this trip of walking mm-hmm. he's like nah nah I'm not going to risk getting arrested by some weirdo also putting that country in lockdown no, thanks to this quite new right. virus so he's, uh, he's getting out by proper means instead so if we move on to the, the next one, there's also some... Uh, this, this is like the meme I mentioned earlier. It's legit like a journo from the 18th century English travellers. Today I went around Bomb Day and a few turban-wearing gentlemen tried to cut my hands off because they thought I stole an apple. Luckily, they couldn't find it on me, so they let me go. Oh, Interesting good day. Good lord. I mean, but that's that's how Miles types, so... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so if we go to the next one, we have the... Uh, other run-in he had, so this is a run-in with a local. Yesterday, I paid someone to take me somewhere. The road was closed, the bombing. They got a quarter of the way there, so he paid a third of the price, and they said they had no issue with that. He then woke up uh, by them, demanding more money and saying to get in their car. I ran to get a taxi to the airport. They said they will hunt me down. That's a bit scary, isn't it? Yeah, so this is where it gets a bit scary, and he's like, uh, yeah, okay, virus that's just killed 90 people come out of nowhere. Um, all the roads have been bombed, can't go on those. Mm-hmm. And uh, now I have some weirdos trying to kill me because I owe them $3 or whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave. So yeah. if we go to the, the last one here, which is uh, him saying, I have a donut and some pineapple juice along with my stuff. <laughs> I tell them in advance I'll pay them in Great British Pounds. And then uh, they see the money and agree. They say Great British Pounds is no good, but I will have to pay them. And I'm causing trouble trying to stop me from leaving. I pay more than a third too, so... 
him being like, I, look, these guys are crazy. I'm getting out. Mm. Uh, and the news on this is the latest, because I saw him posting just before, which is that he is now, uh, as time of recording for the live stream, he should be on the plane getting out of there. So he's getting in a plane. I can't remember where to, but he'll be leaving and then carrying on the adventure wherever else mm. so anyway that's miles of sudan that's his time in south sudan as it seems and how that all went it sounds like he's having a um, a, a while of a time good and and of course some bad but nonetheless uh, yeah you know comes with the territory you know yes and it does he, he knows the risks he knows the uh mess he might get himself into and he's acknowledged all that and just gone yeah i accept that and yeah. I, it's worth it for me the so. world would be a better place if there were more more people like that Needless not that I say. not that I advocate going to South Sudan and goofing off and charity. No, but if you are <laughs> if you are brave enough to do so, then kudos to you. Yeah. But anyway, <sighs> otherwise, um yes. good luck, Miles. Um, I hope you're all right. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to subscribe to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this contemplation series, which uh, Josh and John decided to start up, which is a country profile on South Korea, which I'm sure they will be going into other countries as well to look at the culture and political scene. And I'm sure you can recommend yours below in the comments. But anyway, if you'd like to get updates about what stuff is coming out on the website, you can always follow us on Getter as well. So that's getter.com uh, with lotuseaters underscore com being the at. Thank you and goodbye.